Um, I wanted to read um, one of these um, uh, theater ballads. <clears throat> and this one is called Out of the East, and it tells the story of uh, uh, Cambodia in the years 73 to 75. It's, it's actually quite historically specific. Out of the south came famine, out of the west came strife, out of the north came a storm cone, and out of the east came a warrior wind, and it struck you like a knife. Out of the east there shone a sun, as the blood rose on the day, and it shone on the work of the warrior wind, and it shone on the heart, and it shone on the soul, and they called the sun dismay. And it's a far cry from the jungle to the city of Phnom Penh, and many try and many die before they can see their homes again. And it's a far cry from the paddy track to the palace of the king, and many go before they know it's a far cry. It's a war cry, cry for the war that can do this thing. A foreign soldier came to me, and he gave me a gun, and he predicted victory before the year was done. He taught me how to kill a man, he taught me how to try, but he forgot to say to me how an honest man should die. He taught me how to kill a man who was my enemy, but never how to kill a man who had been a friend to me. You fought the way a hero fights, you had no head for fear, my friend, but you are wounded now, and I'm not allowed to leave you here alive. Out of the east came anger, and it walked a dusty road, and it stopped when it came to a river bank, and it pitched a camp, and it gazed across to where the city stood, when out of the west came thunder, but it came without a sound, for it came at the speed of the warrior wind, and it fell on the heart, and it fell on the soul, and it shook the battleground, and it's a far cry from the cockpit to the foxhole in the clay. And we were a coordinate in a foreign land far away, and it's a far cry from the paddy track to the palace of the king, and many try, and they ask why it's a far cry. It's a war cry, cry for the war that can do this thing. Next year, the army came for me, and I was sick and thin. And they put a weapon in our hands, and they told us we would win. And they feasted us for seven days, and they slaughtered a hundred cattle. And we sang our songs of victory and the glory of the battle. And they sent us down the dusty roads in the stillness of the night. And when the city heard from us, it burst in a flower of light. The tracer bullets found us out. The guns were never wrong. And the gunship said, regret, regret the words of your victory song. Out of the north came an army, and it was clad in black. And out of the south came a gun crew with a hundred shells and a howitzer. And we walked in black along the paddy track, when out of the west came napalm, and it tumbled from the blue. And it spread at the speed of the warrior wind, and it clung to the heart, and it clung to the soul, as napalm is designed to do. And it's a far cry from the fireside to the fire that finds you there. In the foxhole, by the temple gate, the fire that finds you everywhere. And it's a far cry from the paddy track to the palace of the king. And many try, and they ask why it's a far cry. It's a war cry. Cry for the war that can do this thing. My third year in the army, I was 16 years old, and I had learnt enough, my friend, to believe what I was told. And I was told that we would take the city of Phnom Penh, and they slaughtered all the cows we had, and they feasted us again, and at last we were given river mines, and we blocked the great Mekong. And now we trained our rockets on the landing strip at Pochentong. The city lay within our grasp. We only had to wait. We only had to hold the line by the foxhole, by the temple gate, when out of the west came cluster bombs, and they burst in a hundred shards. And every shard was a new bomb, and it burst again upon our men as they gasped for breath in the temple yard. Out of the west came a new bomb, and it sucked away the air, and it sucked at the heart, and it sucked at the soul, and it found a lot of children there, and it's a far cry from the temple yard to the map of the general staff, from the grease pen to the gasping men to the wind that blows the soul like chaff, and it's a far cry from the paddy track to the palace of the king, and many go before they know it's a far cry. It's a war cry, cry for the war that has done this thing. A foreign soldier came to me, and he gave me a gun, and the liar spoke of victory before the year was done. Oh, what would I want with victory in the city of Phnom Penh? Punish the city, punish the people. What would I want but punishment? We have brought the king home to his palace. We shall leave him there to weep, and we'll go back along the paddy track, for we have promises to keep, for the promise made in the foxhole, for the oath in the temple yard, for the friend I killed on the battlefield, I shall make that punishment hard. Out of the south came famine, out of the west came strife, 
Out of the north came a storm cone, and out of the east came a warrior wind, and it struck you like a knife. Out of the east there shone a sun, as the blood rose on the day, and it shone on the work of the warrior wind, and it shone on the heart, and it shone on the soul. And they called the sun dismay, my friend. They called the sun dismay. And there's a coda to that. Thank you. <clears throat> A sort of coda to that one, a poem called Blood and Lead. Listen to what they did. Don't listen to what they said. What was written in blood has been set up in lead. Lead tears the heart. Lead tears the brain. What was written in blood has been set up again. The heart is a drum. The drum has a snare. The snare is in the blood. The blood is in the air. Listen to what they did. Listen to what's to come. Listen to the blood. Listen to the drum. So this one's about the Philippines. <clears throat> it's called The Milkfish Gatherers. And it's about the rural poor who um, subsist by um, walking along the shallows of the sea and with a, a long kind of net called a bag net. And it's something the whole family does. And um, they're looking for these absolutely tiny milkfish fry, which, which they're then going to sell on to the fish pond owners. Um, so they're, they're looking for something absolutely tiny. So it's a very good um, task for the old because it's not hard, it's not hard work. It's just walking along parallel with the seashore, dragging this bag net. And then um, <coughs> for the very young because their eyesight is good enough to be able to pick out when you, once you've got a bowl full of these these things to actually to pick them out and you 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 count them out one by one. You don't, um, they're not sold in bulk though; they're very valuable. These these fry. <coughs> it's called the milkfish gatherers. The sea sounds insincere giving and taking with one hand. It stopped a river here last month, filling its mouth with sand. They drag the shallows for the milkfish fry, two eyes on a glass noodle, nothing more. Roused by his vigilant young wife, the drowsy stevedore comes running barefoot past the swamp to meet a load of wood. The yellow-peaked cap, the patched pink shorts, seem to be all his worldly goods. The Nipah booths along the coast protect the milkfish gatherer's rights. Nothing goes unobserved. My good custodian sprawls in the deck chair through the night. Take care, he said. Take care. Not everybody is a friend. And so he makes my life more private still, a privacy on which he will attend. But the dogs are sly with the garbage, and the cats ruthless even with sliced bread as the terns are ruthless among the shoals. Men watch the terns, then give the boat its head, dragging a wide arc through the blue, trailing their lines, cutting the engine out at the first sign. A hundred feet away, something of value struggles not to die. It will sell for a dollar a kilo. It weighs two kilos on the line, a prize. And the hull fills with a fortune, and the improbable colors of the sea. But the spine lives when the brain dies in a convulsive misery. Rummagers of inlets, scourers of the deep, dynamite men, their bottles crammed with wicks. They named the sea's inhabitants with style, the slapped vagina fish, the horse's dick. Palilio melts means it is far away, the smoking island plumed from slash and burn. And from its shore, busy with hermit crabs, look to Luzon, 
Infanta melts in turn. The setting sun behind the Sierra Madre projects a sharp blue line across the sky. And in the eastern glow beyond Polillo, it looks as if another sun might rise, as if there were no night, only a brother evening and a dawn. No night, no death. How could these people live? How could the pressure lanterns lure the prawns? Nothing of value has arrived all day. No timber, no rattan. Now, after dark, the news comes from the sea. They crowd the beach and prime a lantern waiting for the shark. The young receive the gills which they will cook. The massive liver wallows on the shore. And the shark's teeth look like a row of sharks advancing along a jaw. Alone again by spirit light, I notice something happening on a post. Something has burst its skin and now it hangs, hangs for dear life onto its fine brown ghost. Clinging exhausted to its former self, its head flung back as if to watch the moon, the blue-green veins pulsing along its wings, the thing unwraps itself but falls too soon. The ants are tiny and their work is swift. The insect shark is washed up on their land while the sea sounds insincere, giving and taking with one hand. At dawn along the seashore come the milkfish gatherers, human fry. A white polythene bowl is what you need to sort the milkfish by. For a hatched fish is a pair of eyes. There is nothing more to see. But the spine lives when the brain dies in a convulsive misery. <laughs>